let's talk about the project. So this is probably the part that um, I lost some of you at. So maybe you skipped to this part of the video. If you have been with me so far, it's been a while. So if you wanna take a break, stretch your legs, just pause the video. Um, you can always come back to this part later. Um, what I did here is kind of set up this paper like you could a page in your sketchbook to do the project. Um, and ideally this paper would be big enough to do the project here, but really that's too small. That's like four, four by six, three by five. It's pretty small. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just kind of brainstorm on this paper and then I will move on to my sketchbook for the project. And I'm not gonna do the project with y'all. Um, but what I can do is I will work on this and then if you would like to see my example, you are more than welcome to ask me um, to email it to you and I can email you a picture of what I did. Um, okay, so for the abstract composition project, you are supposed to be inspired by the painting I saw figure five in gold. So let's pull up that. Um, okay, do I have it bigger anywhere? Not really. Okay, so this painting right here is the painting that I want you to be inspired by, and it looks like, there we go. Okay, and this painting was actually inspired by a poem. Um, we know that this artist, DeMuth, liked to do portraits of other artists that he was friends with, um, but he would not make, you know, a traditional portrait of their face. Um, you can look him up and you'll find several others. I thought the Georgia O'Keeffe one was very interesting. Um, but this one is of one of his poetry um, friends, this guy who wrote the poem that inspired this painting, was actually a doctor, but also um, a poet. And so he made this painting about one of the poems that he wrote about being isolated by himself. Um, and then a fire en engine or fire truck kind of like zooming by him in the night. So once you know that, this is not nearly as abstract as it looks. Um, and this is like a true abstract piece of art. So it's not non-representational like Jackson Pollock splatters, which we usually confuse and say that's abstract, but really it's not. Um, this is abstract where I can barely tell what it's of, but it is of something. So once I know that, I think, oh, it's a fire engine. Well, I see the red, see the big red shape then I can actually, if you could see it bigger on the screen, you could actually see, let me see if I can make that big. Um, okay, you can actually see on the left, kind of like a wheel axle. Um, on the right, you can see the wheel axle and then you can see a ladder right here in this area that's like going back into space. Um, that's why the five is repeated because it's on the side of the truck and as the truck drives away, it's getting smaller and smaller. The emphasis is definitely placed on that large five. And then these are actually the headlights. And I noticed these first, but then once I realize what's going on, I realize that these circles are actually headlights as well. So all of that kind of shows it going away. And then the lines are kind of showing that as well. Um, they're all kind of like going towards that five. It's that radiating line, um, compositional device. Then um, if you look at it, you can see some little words in the background, but that's probably one of the last things that you notice. All right, so let's get into what I want you to do for your project. I don't think I can make that bigger. Okay, well, we'll just look at it like that. So for me, it was helpful to have a theme. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose a theme for mine. So my theme is going to be my dogs. And you don't have to choose a theme if you don't want to, but it just kind of helps me to narrow my focus. Um, then what I want you to do is be inspired by the painting I just showed you and pick seven elements um, that you can include to make some sort of composition, okay? So like pretend like this is gonna be my composition. I'm not gonna do right here because it's too small and this is copy paper, so I'm definitely gonna do this in my sketchbook. Um, what I ask is that you did it seven by 10, so seven inches by 10 inches. Um, you can do it a little bit smaller if you have to. You can do it bigger, of course, because um, some of you only have five by seven sketchbooks, so that will be fine, but a full page in your sketchbook. All right, then um, go ahead and follow that 60, 30, 10 rule and pick three colors. So I think, and I'm not 100% sure, but I think the colors I'm gonna choose are going to be teal and then kind of like a purple, and then um, 
I don't know if I'm going to do orange or not, but I think those are going to be my colors. Um, mostly purple, probably, but I'll decide that as I go. Now, remember, I can use tints and shades of these, so I can use like light versions of those colors, like lavender, um, but I don't want to add a bunch more colors. I could actually use brown because it's orange, so I don't know if I want to do that. But anyways, um, just don't go too crazy with your colors because then it will make it kind of overwhelming. Um, the reason I have you focus on um, more abstract things is that's going to help you. All the decisions that you make should be about composition instead of, oh my gosh, I have to draw this person correctly. Um, all right, so some shapes that you can use. Um, I think I want to use ovals and maybe some triangles. Um, I think with dogs, I'm going to have to use rectangles. Maybe I can play with that. Maybe some diamonds. We'll see. Okay, so that's my brainstorm for shapes that I can use. Then brainstorm some different letters. Um, you can pick your favorite letters. Like, I don't know about you, but as an artist, I have some letters that I think are prettier than others. You can use letters from your own name. Um, I'm going to use a K. And then my dogs are named Coin and Nala, so I'm going to use a Q and an N. And the cool thing here is, I mean, I could use as many letters as I wanted to, but I can play with what kind of style or typeface I want to use here. So I could do a really scripty, pretty K. I could do a more like block letter Q and, you know, that's what you're drawing. Um, and that should kind of simplify it and make it a little bit easier for you. Okay, the next thing I want to brainstorm are some numbers. Um, and remember, they're just design elements. So I'm going to go with my dog theme. I've got three-year-old dog and a four-year-old dog. Um, I have two dogs and I actually happen to think that the number two is really pretty. Um, and then three plus four is seven. So maybe I'll use those. I'm going to kind of play with it and see. All right, then some words. Um, their actual names. The word puppy. Um, maybe mutt. Just some different words. That's why I picked a theme to kind of help me narrow that down. All right, so once you've got all this decided, it should give you some good stuff to kind of work with. And so let's go, let's go this so you can see the bottom of my paper. Okay, so now, now let's go into thumbnails. All right, so this is the part um, where you get to take this brainstorming and kind of think about what you want your focal point to be. Um, and so remember, all your decisions should be about um, what is going to work and look good. Okay, um, I don't care as much about the symbolism here. I want it to be designed well. So maybe um, I like the letter Q a lot. I think it's very pretty. So maybe I'll have like a big Q. Um, but I want both my dogs to be represented equally. So I'm also going to put like an N on there. And you see I'm already kind of playing with the letters a little bit. Um, I'll probably look some stuff up and do a little bit more with that. Okay, and then um, he had some lines in his background, so I think I'm going to put some lines in my background. And then somehow I would like to represent my dogs. So if I do something with some shapes, I don't want it to look too much like a dog. So I'll probably need to make this more abstract. All right, so right now, I don't have hierarchy at all. So what I want to think about is like, what colors could I use to make certain things stand out more? So I probably want these to be like super bold so that they stand out. The dog shape is going to be a lot anyways, so I'll do something with that. And then if I want to put some words in there, I probably want those to be um, not the main focus. So thinking about placement, adding some mystery, things like that. All right, so that's OK. Um, I did say to have seven elements. So right now I have one, two, three, four, five elements. 
Um, so maybe I just need to add some abstract shapes in here. So some ovals would be kind of cool just to kind of balance out that composition and make it look more interesting. Now, something like this is what you would call a thumbnail. So I haven't done a lot of refining, um, but now I want to kind of revise that thumbnail. So let me think about what worked and what didn't work and let me make another thumbnail. So first of all, my dog was a little overwhelming last time. So what if I do something where I put the very abstract shapes over here and do something more like this? All right, so that still looks like a dog, but if I do enough to the shapes, maybe I can make them abstract enough in the final drawing that something like that would actually work. All right, so that's definitely working better than this one already. Then maybe I can use the golden mean to literally divide my space. All right, so that means that I'm gonna put one of my letters here and maybe one of my letters here and maybe something else here behind the dog um and then i can put one of these like not maybe all the way in the frame So something like that. All right, so these two are very different. What do I like and what, I do, what do I not like? So I like how I broke up this space better than the lines that I drew here. Um, this is okay, but it's still not entirely working for me. So what I'm gonna do on this one is I'm gonna take that same idea and repeat it. So I've got my little golden mean squares again. And then this time I think I'm gonna focus on putting one thing in each square except for the dog. So let me kind of make this look a little bit more like a dog this time. Um, my dog has like these chihuahua ears. Okay, so I think that's gonna work there, but I'm gonna have to work very hard to make sure that this does not take over the whole drawing. Um, so I'm gonna put the Q here this time and the N here this time so that those are my focus. Something like that. It will have to be dark. Okay, so something like that with my Q and my N and then I could put the number two here and then maybe just the word nut right there. And then maybe do something with shapes in those two areas. Um, I can even do a pattern in here, something like that. All right, so at this point, like I'm pretty happy with this one. And so I really don't have to do another thumbnail. Um, so if you get to a point where you're kind of happy, usually by the third one, I'm happy. Um, but maybe I want to play with what happens if I did this the opposite way. and then play with that kind of composition and still put my figure down here. I'm doing it messier now. But I like the idea of including like dog bones as part of my pattern and then keeping this in the front. It's still a little bit too representational, so I'll probably go back to something more like this, um, but that might be a good shape to kind of abstract um, and use in my final composition. So once I've done all of this, the brainstorming's done and I'm ready to do my project. And that can be any medium, um, any style, 
that you want. As long as you have seven elements, you create some kind of hierarchy and um, focus mostly on design. All right, thank you so much. That is everything. Hope you have a great week.